Chapter 34 Mr. Johnson is released from the Kuula Tabu. That evening, Mrs. Johnson and Elena prepared dinner. We just let our minds wander and talked of different things. Still, I always watched Henelikou's reaction, which always showed on his face. All my life, I always tried to read a person's character by his mood and the manner of his speech. Penelope Koo's mood and the manner of his speech gave me an idea that his mind was concentrating on receiving a message and I should not interrupt or question him. I would talk to Mrs. Johnson and say, I can read in your face that you have a problem. She would ask me how I could tell, and I said I just read character. By doing this, Henele Ku knew that I knew he was receiving a message, but I could not read his mind as he could mine. This is something I wanted to learn, but Henele Ku warned me not to try, because mental telepathy was not easy. He said, Those who are gifted learn quickly, but once you acquire this, you want more. Then your mind is busy day and night, even when you are asleep. You can't commune with the spirit as I can. I told Henele Ku, I have promised my mother not to explore the field of mental telepathy. I promised by swearing and placing my hand on the Bible called the Momi, a Catholic Bible written in Hawaiian. This is the Bible I learned how to read and write. All I want to do is to tell exactly what I see and hear and not try to be like you. That is the reason my mother sent me to you. She knew you can help me in everything I want to know. Then Henele Ku spoke of his part as the keeper of the royal household. As a commoner, he was the last of the direct descent because during his time they abolished the royal family that released all obligation. He said, As a private citizen, I am just an ordinary kahuna. You have witnessed what I have done. This is how we exercise our authority of what we have learned to help those that violate the taboo system. In time to come, this will be a matter to be read in books, just as you are writing now. The only remaining answer is to wait to hear from the doctor. When we hear that the news of my work is completed, then I can say I have contributed my art to save a life. He spoke to me. I am glad and proud to know that your writing will live forever. What we know is passed from word of mouth, and when we die, our word dies with us, but your writing will live for generations to read and understand. I turned to Henele Ku and asked him to repeat what he received through mental telepathy. He replied, I think your judgment of character reading is very good. I would advise you not to go any further. It would mean trouble. You will be very happy staying just as you are. You can see that I am always having trouble. My mind cannot rest. I said, I am glad you let me see. I will take your advice. Then Penelope Ku turned to Mrs. Johnson and said, Mr. Johnson is released from all responsibility as prescribed by the Kuula Tabu, but he must not try to do it again. You will receive a telephone call in a few minutes. This will substantiate my message to you. I asked Henele Ku about the catching of the spirit and why this was done. He replied, The keeper of the Kuula refused me when I asked leniency for Mr. Johnson. My only course was to extinct the keeper's spirit with the understanding I must return the Kuula to the burial cave. Just then, the phone rang. Mrs. Johnson ran to it and received the message. The doctor told her Mr. Johnson was resting nicely and that she could come and visit him any time. She thanked the doctor and hung up. 
then turned and thanked Henelikou for all that he had done. It was then about midnight. Mrs. Johnson prepared a snack. She said to Henelikou, I will miss you when you leave here tomorrow. You know how happy I am to be with you. You have taken my worries out of my head. I feel like a new woman. Henelikou smiled and said, I am glad you feel that way. We sat at the table and had hot chocolate and cake, and then we all went to our rooms to sleep. When I awoke, it was daylight. Penelikou was out walking along the seashore. I could see him from my bedroom window. I got up and dressed and did the same thing. The morning air was good, and I really enjoyed the walk. I met Henelikou as he was walking back. I asked him, What is that that you have in your hand? He replied, It is seaweed that the waves wash on the rocks. I can see that it is fresh. To get this seaweed, you must dive out in the deep. Usually, when the sea is stormy, the seaweed is broken off and the waves bring it to the shore. It is called limu lipoa. After I clean the seaweed and squeeze out the salt water, I will roll it into a small ball, and it will keep in a jar for a long time. Every time I have raw fish, I use the seaweed to give it that ocean aroma. This is also good for the health. We walked back to the house. As we passed near the altar rock, we both looked and there was not a sign of fish. When we reached the house, Mrs. Johnson had breakfast ready on the table. Henelikou put the limu lipoa on the sink and asked Mrs. Johnson to clean it and put it in a little jar so he could take it back home with him. We all sat at the table and Henelikou said the blessing. After eating, I asked him what time he wanted to return home and he said, any time I was ready. After breakfast, I stood up and excused myself as I had to check and clean the car for the trip back. Penelikou walked into his room to pack his belongings. After everything was put into the car, we all kissed Mrs. Johnson and the little girl and shook hands with Domingo, then took off for Penelikou's home. As I was driving, my mind was thinking about what we came for and it was all well done, and everything came out all right. It really amazed me, as this was something I did not expect to see.